ready now. Right, welcome back to Five. Stephen Alson, Joel and Cam's sitting in a car in a car park somewhere and on, on some random motorway heading south, I assume, uh, Rio. Um, where do we even start? I don't know, man. Disaster, disaster. The, the thumbnail says it all, mate. Firstly, I, I was at the, um, the Liverpool game. Spurs, man. Spurs should have won that game. Liverpool had loads of chances. I don't know you guys. Did you watch it at all? Yeah, I was watching it. Yeah, adva advantage City what? now, man. If they they don't even need a team talk. Wow, wow, wow! And you guys, and so wait, 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 wait. It's like you're starting off with the Liverpool game, but I really do think we should start with the United game. Why? Four 0 thrashing against Brighton. I remember, pumped. right? I remember pumped. Pumped. I remember when United fans, all types of fans were laughing at Arsenal when we were saying, Brian are a hard team to play against. Do you know what I mean? And they looked like they were not only beating you guys, but they were having fun. It actually seemed, it actually seemed like you guys got away with it at 4-0. Danny Welbeck could have easily made it five. Trostard could have got another one and it could have been six. It was absolutely the most, probably the most embarrassing Man United performance I've seen in many years. And I'm not just saying that to dig out you know, dig you guys out and whatnot, but it's past the banner stage now. It's kind of like... Why are you pretending like we didn't, like, completely go on holiday about three weeks ago? Yeah, but you know what? We say things like that, but you don't actually expect it because of professionals. Rio? Yeah, no, I, I, I can't disagree with everything Joel said there. He's got, he's got me in a headlock right now. Can't say nothing. Um, no... I... It's got to the stage, I was talking to Crouchy and Robbie Fowler today at the game, like, it's got to a stage where you don't even, you, you can't even put up a fight as a Man United fan right now. Like, we're just getting mocks every week. We've gone down to to Brighton, gone down to the seaside for a day out, got pumped on the way, got sent back home. Like, yeah. there's no fight, there's no character, it seems, there's no desire. People have down tools, it seems. You're getting smashed 4 0 at Brighton, and listen, Brighton are a decent team, but Man United shouldn't be getting beat 4 0 like that. But listen, man, it's terrible. It's a terrible situation, and, and I really wonder what it's like in that change room now. Like, is there anyone standing up? Is there anyone, any characters that are picking people out, or is everyone thinking, you know what? It's gone now. Gone, we've gone. Surely That's it is. It. There's probably a. We could easily sit here and tell you 10 players that are going without really getting imaginative. Is that the problem? Is there so many players that know they don't have to deal with this next season? Because... Yeah, yeah I think it's a, a bit of that. There. And as well... I think that's part of the problem. And, and, and like, half of them are sitting there thinking, I ain't, this manager ain't going to be here either, so I ain't got to try for my man. He ain't, he ain't bother me. He's not here. 10 of them boys ain't going to be here. I'm still going to be here. I've got two or three years left. So what? And the ones that are going as well just think, you know what, probably it seems like that. These, these guys will probably tell you different, but the, the actions speak louder than words in these situations. And we look terrible. We look off it. We look nothing. It says, you're not, I see fans shouting, you're not fit to wear the shirt. Imagine being in that change room and a man shouting, you're not fit to wear the shirt. What your pride will be saying right now. Mad. I know you know stuff that you hold back from us. And sometimes you have to. What's the mood in that dressing room? Without going full Jesse Lingard and Paul Scholes on it right now, I know we've keep keep it anonymous if you want. What are you hearing from inside there at the minute? I don't. It's not even about what I'm hearing from inside. I just think you, it's it's plain for us all to see. Yeah. Go on, Cam. What do you say, Cam? I think it's it's plain for us all to see, Steve, like that. Like, I, I'm not one to talk about what's been said b privately between me and uh, anyone that's at that club, but I think it's more about what do you see when they're on that pitch? I see a distinct lack of intensity, a distinct lack of effort, a distinct lack of yeah, desire. Yeah, you know, I feel, I feel like what, with what Steve said, I fully agree. I think these players now... Can you hear me? Yeah? Can you hear me? I think you lot are on a massive lag, but don't worry about it. <laughs> I was connected to your producer. Can you hear me, yeah? Can you guys hear me? Are they, are they just absolutely lagging us out? 
Yeah, tell them to come off. Just need to come off. There's no point in them being on there if it's going to be lagged like that. Go on, what are you saying, man? But yeah, I just don't. I, there's, there's no, there's no desire. There's no character. There's no yeah. intensity with what they're doing. There's no understanding of what the game plan is, or, or even I, I've understanding of the game plan, or even respect of what's been told to, for them to go and carry out. They're not willing to work. Can for you guys manager. hear us? No, nope. can't hear you. <laughs> they're, they're not willing to work for this manager. They're not willing they to us. go out there and play for the shirt. It seems yeah, it's, 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 it's they're in disarray, man. The place Hello? is in disarray. Steve, <laughs> Steve, this fucking stream. This stream is just a symptom of United at the minute. This stream reminds me of Man United. Ill-prepared <laughs> and just not functioning. Oh, um, and it's a bit of a laughing stock. It's become a laughing stock at the place. And that's the that's the most disheartening thing. When I'm having banter, listen, we're all like we're football people. We love the game. We have a laugh and that. I'm on the way to Manchester and I've I'm, I'm in the car with driving. And the geezer who's driving with me don't even have a laugh with me about Man United or even throw any banter my way. That tells me we're beyond laughing at us. That's where we're at, Steve. It's a, it's an absolute nightmare, and it needs it needs sorting out. And I don't know I don't know if the right things are in place to sort it out just yet. It's going to take long. It's going to take this is going to this isn't a, a quick fix. This is. I think everyone's just wigged out apart from me here now. Cam, uh, we're, 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 go on, Cam. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Day the last day two day times, you've got 30 seconds behind. Do you know what? I, I, I fully agree with what you said earlier, Steve. I feel like the players are now in a position where I think they've just given up at the end of the day. I think they don't want to play for Ralph, but they also didn't want to play for Oli. And they also didn't want to play for Jose. So I feel like it's the time that Man United needs to just go on a mass exodus. A lot of these players are not good enough to play for Man United. Quality-wise and mentality-wise, they aren't either because there's still a couple thousand fans that travel down there today. you still got to put a performance in for those fans. You're not going to do anything. You're just going to send an apology and say, oh, sorry, we're sorry, and that's about it. These players don't care anymore. They're overrated players, overpaid as well, and the motivation to perform is totally not there, man. Like, it's about time that United have to rip this core. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what happened there. Where, where's he got? Here he is. Um, yeah, I agree. At the moment, I, I can see and loads of people saying... I feel like the, 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 the term rebuild is such a damned word because we've heard it so many times. But it's a fact now. These players... Look, United are not the greatest team in the world, but them players are not bad. <laughs> They've gone now as well. <laughs> oh. We're not good Go enough. Real. You up? So, d d d we're not good enough. I don't, d d some players haven't, haven't got the, the right character or enough character. They're not showing that. And as soon as we go a goal down, I now have no belief in what we're going to be able to get, do and get out of that game because of that character. You used to go to, you go to a game of Man United, you expect the bare minimum is graft and hard work. Players sprinting to people. I don't, I don't even see that, the basic fundamentals anymore. It's like, do you know I what? Thought, I've had enough. If you were talking tactically manager, today, and I'll start again. Huh? Tactically today, I thought there was we were getting overloaded in the back line. Midfield wasn't following its runners. Me and you had a conversation last week talking about really good defensive fundamentals. And I appreciate any chance I get to chat to you about stuff like that. And we were speaking about it's always, you got to be plus one. you got to make sure you've always got an extra man in the back line. Today, I thought Varane had a clangor at, at times today. And I thought he wasn't on his own. But they had players left and right of them. I don't care who you are. You're not marking two players at once, are you? And that comes from me from work rate from the midfield. Yeah, I just think it's a combination. When one person in the, in the machine isn't working, it's a domino effect and it affects everybody. 
no matter who, how good you are, if you've got players that are just like either cheating, don't understand the system, have no desire to understand it, have no desire to put the work in, then you're all going to fall down. All of you are going to fall down. So, and 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 I don't know, the manager, listen, even the manager, when I hear the manager speaking, we've never been a club to air our dirty laundry in public. The guy's talking about details that should be kept within the club. Oh, I tried to tell him to put the ball to buy this player, that player. Talk to the ball. Don't talk to the public about that type of stuff. Or if you're going to talk about that, when you've left the place and you've severed ties with the club, maybe that's when you want to talk about it. Fine, I understand that maybe. You can get a few things off your chest. You're still there working within the club. And you're airing dirty laundry out. Oh, I tried to tell them to sign these three players. Oh, Diaz at Liverpool is now flying. It makes him look a bit better and just takes the takes the, the responsibility off his shoulders, maybe. I don't think it's right what he's doing. Don't speak, yeah, you're disappointed or things could have been dealt with differently. Speak about that and iron that out at the club. And then when you've gone, then you can say, you say your piece, maybe. Doing it while you're there right now it doesn't help I told anybody. you, but I told you. I told you that, Ria. I told you that a few weeks ago, man. It looks nuts from the outside looking in. You know, did you hear what he said about the Jesse Lingard situation? When, when you know, they obviously asked him about his, the, his brother putting the stuff out there. And he went into a whole heap of detail. Like, well, Jesse took time off. He asked me for time off, free substitutes. I just thought, mate, you can be a little bit more diplomatic than that. It actually makes your club from the outside look crazy. Like, there's no control yeah, what's going on. He's giving we'll people time off when they probably shouldn't be. Yeah, I think, they're, I, think they're, I, think, I think they're all wrong in that situation. I, I, I don't think Jesse's brother comes out of it looking pretty. And I don't think Ralph or the club do either. It's, it's, all, all, the, all, all of it stinks for me. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like May United's laundry being washed in, the, in public eye like this. It's not something that was ever done before. It's not something that's that's, that's, that's liked. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, man. I just don't like it. I think when you severed your ties with the club, then you can speak maybe. But like, while you're there and stuff, you have to respect the badge, respect the history of the football club, respect the people that have gone before you. And and, and it's unfortunate because it ain't actually Jesse chatting. It's his brother talking. Yeah. And it's Ralph Raniak, but Jesse's caught in the middle of it. And it's like, Somebody's got to put a stop to this type of thing because it's not right. We, it's not just Jesse's brother, by the way. There's been other people, other family members of, of other players, other agents of other players that have spoken out of turn about situations at the club. The club to deal with that stuff and stuff. That's what goes back to my point at the beginning. There's there's not that 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 figurehead at the moment at the football club that's ruling the place of an iron fist and saying no no no. This is the standard now. This is where you got to go. And I think that's that's something that. I know the new people are working towards that, but at the moment it's not in place. I was going to mention that a second ago. I, I spoke about it earlier on Paddock. I think that when we lost Sir Alex, we didn't just lose our manager and our tactician and our motivator. I think we lost our director of football and our heart and our vision. And there's nobody that's come into the club since Sir Alex that's had even a quarter of the power that Sir Alex had, in my opinion. And I actually think Sir Alex got done dirty in the last few years by the club, in terms of when you look at the five years that preceded our new owners and the five years post our new owners, and you look at what we actually spent on transfers. Sir Alex Ferguson made a profit on transfers in the first five years or so of the, of the Glazer ownership. This is a man that continually broke the British transfer record uh, in the years before. Um, I can't believe that his no value in the market line was something that really rang true in his heart. I think he was had his wings clipped and did what he could to sort of like placate everybody. But he was Manchester United. Every standard that you had on you at the pitch, every standard of... You've mentioned before about Phil Neville coming to training in a Ferrari and having a piss ripped out of him for it. That was a standard that he set. The standards in training, he set. The standards of behaviour and dress code. I mean, we was having a laugh the other day at what Manchester City wore um, on the European trip. You know, Manchester United travelling in club blazers and ties. Those standards are Sir Alex Ferguson standards. No one's had that level of power since. 
and it's it's been in the hands of different directors and, and different CEOs. If United want to get back to being a real serious football club, they need a real serious football guy that is able to have the sort of power that Sir Alex had to make those sorts of changes, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think that comes with, over time as well, though. It's not, it doesn't happen immediately and overnight. It comes with a bit of time. Um, but listen, Klopp, Pep Guardiola, they're the two benchmarks right now in our league. You can't tell me that when them players are making decisions off the pitch, when those players are making decisions on the pitch, that their first thought is, will my manager be happy with that? Will my manager understand that? Was that, that your first benefit? thought? Yeah, is that, is, is that going to benefit? Listen, I made mistakes. I wasn't perfect. You could pull up so many things that I'd done wrong in, the, in, 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 um, in my time at Manchester United. But at the same time, if I did make a mistake, I was pulled right in line. There was a there was a, there was a consequence for any actions that you'd done on or off the field. If it wasn't right, there was there was obviously going to be a conversation confronted, and there was a disciplinary uh, kind of act that would be followed within the club. Right now, man, I don't feel that that's there, and I feel that players have no fear of consequences for any actions or any actions of people associated to them. That's why agents or family members are allowed to come out and speak. Bro, if I was at that club, I would never allow that. These these agents and, and people couldn't be speaking about about the club like this. And and then the person that is about have no consequences. No way. No way. Because at the end of the day, the people that actually are at the football club, they employ the people around them. So when them people around them are speaking, it... it that is like, in my eyes, and I think the club's eyes should start should be, that is coming from that person who's associated to the club. So if they're speaking, that falls on your toes because you're meant to control that. And I don't think that's the case right now. And, and it's unfortunate for Jesse because Jesse ain't said a word. And I feel sorry for him. He ain't said a word. But unfortunately, he's going to be judged by, by the fans on some, on some stuff that a family member has said. And that's the unfortunate thing, but that's the way this world works now with social media. And that's the difference. Like, these things get, they could have got said years um, ago I know. by a family member. It could have been said by a family member years ago. No, it doesn't travel because there ain't social media. It's different now. Good job. <laughs> Where is he in 1985? Let's move it on to uh, Rio. You said you were also at the Liverpool Spurs game today. Um, we titled the video Advantage City. Is that what you truly really believe now? Do you reckon that it's for City to lose? Obviously, we know that one point is a lot. What do you say? Yeah, I think City have got the advantage. And I think more than anything, mentally, I think more than anything, mentally, this would have helped City. This would have helped City in the fact that. Liverpool had won and gone through an elated... Are you frozen, Rio? For you? No, I haven't. He's, I'm he's all not right. frozen. You're frozen. You. You got to drop out. But I think, I think more than anything, I think City, they were really low and they were down after midweek. And rightly so. That's the way it is after games like that, when it takes so much out of you. Extra time, the way in which they lost. Devastating. But I don't think Pep Guardiola needs to even do a team talk this week now. He's got. They've got what they wanted. They've got the incentive for them to go and make a bit more of a gap by winning this weekend against Newcastle. I think it's a great opportunity for them now. I think you'll freshen it up. You have to bring new faces in, which will be good for them. They're not going to be... Them, them players that come in won't be as mentally scarred as the ones that are out there. And um, I still think there'll be a twist before the end of the season or two. Twist yeah, or two. I can but, smell that. And I, I actually think Newcastle could be the place. They're flying. I think Wolves... Wolves away for Newcastle. I mean, for City is a hard game. But anything else you got? See, you want to talk about about you know? Yeah, I want. To, there's, there's loads of people asking questions here. Thanks to everyone for asking questions. It's difficult between doing it like this to be able to get into every questions. But um, someone earlier just asked. I just can't find it. How would you have reacted today? You've just lost 4-0 at Brighton. All the circumstances go in. I think there's a clear distinction in 
the likes of maybe Cavani and Matic and Matter and, and probably a few others who know they're going. And maybe the likes of Cristiano and possibly Bruno and a couple of others who definitely know they're staying. Well, what I'd be curious to know what your thoughts would be or actions would be. I think if you'd ask Albert Morgan, the kit man, he, said, he would have said there would have been a lot of clean up to do. I'd have, I'd have messed up that changing room for starters. I'd have gone nuts. Um, yeah, it's just disappointing. I think it's questioning each other. I think it's like asking questions of each other. Who does anyone fucking care? I I, I want to know that them questions are being asked. Because if I smelt that someone didn't care, I'd be calling them out straight away. But I think there'd be more people who don't care than do. And then you're in the minority. Then fuck off then. That's what I'll be saying. Get out. That's how I would be. I would be like, don't come and don't play then. Don't get your boots boots laced up then. If you don't care, if I'm smelling, if I smell that and you don't, and you're not giving me the answers or the energy that I, we need back to be to be a team that can at least compete in games, then don't come out here because you're not, you're not only embarrassing yourself, you're embarrassing me, you're affecting me. But it's 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 so difficult because you can't compare you know, like change rooms. Our change room was a really stable change room built on winning, built on success, built on the right culture, built on the right standards every day. This day, this changing room is very different. It's a weak, it seems like a weak-minded changing room. The results tell you that, the way that they get beat, the way that they let games slip away from them. It tells you that mentally they're not strong, they're not there. How many players can fix that? Yeah, you need players, but you need someone driving it, man. I, I knew, once Sir Angus Ferguson left the club, you realise how important it is for to have somebody there driving the driving the bus. Did you feel like unplugging? Like, was it like really noticeable once he left that drive? No, it wasn't. It wasn't immediate because you still think actually it's about us as well. It's us players. We're the guys that drive this. That's what your ego tells you that as well. You look six months down the line, even maybe a bit earlier, and you go actually wow, the importance of that guy at the top of the, at the helm. You can't even put that into, into that, what, what that looks like in figures. It's just like crazy. But you do need you need players to carry out the information he's putting across, to carry out the culture, to carry out the standards on a day-to-day basis as well. And if they're not in the building, you've got to get rid of them and find them. That's the job of the recruitment. That's why recruitment is so important. You're not just buying footballers. You're buying, you're buying people. You're buying ready-made men who are going to be there to actually create the culture for you and with you. And the job of the new people, the new person that comes in, the new manager, Eric Ten Hag, is identifying who those people are that are worth keeping. One of the the things I always enjoy hearing you talk about, um, and I think it, people seem to refer to the Roy Keane sort of days. So I'm going to ask you to not reference Roy Keane in this and maybe reference sometime around uh, when we were European champions, because we were pretty good then, I think it's fair to say. Remember that. Close your eyes and remember that. It's not even black and white. It's actually in colour. But it feels like it was in black and white days. If you cast your mind back to some of those training sessions, from what I've heard you say, those were some excellent competitive 11 v 11s midweek before we played on a Saturday. Am I right in saying that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've heard you mention Nemanja Vidic's first training session where he pulled you aside and was like, is it like that every day? Yeah, yeah. Now, the standard, you that's what, that's, think that about United my, now, my... is that happening at United yeah. now? Can you go and watch a United training session now and be blown away by the pace of it? Because I can't even fathom that you would be. I, I just feel that the competitive edge and energy might not be there the same as consistently. Do you know what I mean? Like, like the, and it goes beyond just the training pitch. You go, it, it, I always say this, every single time there was a chance of a competition, whether it be a, a quiz, whether it be a card school, whether it be playing computer games, whether it be playing table tennis, playing two-touch basketball, the competitive energy ran through the veins of everybody and no one wanted to lose it. It was almost a fight all the time. An argument, a little bit of aggression, do you know what I mean? All the time. It strikes me like it might be a bit easy ozy in there. I'd love to be t- told I'm wrong, but the results on the weekends make me feel like that. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't, you don't allow teammates not to run and put it in. I'm sorry, but you can't. It always reflects badly on you. So you as an individual can't accept that from a teammate. It shouldn't be allowed, man. I just I don't know, man. I don't think they're playing for each other. And I don't think they're playing for the manager. Simple as. The results no, have got no. worse since he's come in. No. I, I think it... I think he's going to get a lot of flack for the results. Um, and I, I think he's made mistakes. I don't think he's blameless You're at all, out, actually. Steve. You are? I'm cutting out. Go on. You lose me, then. You're cutting out, mate. All right. It might be you because I'm wired, so it might be you on the internet. Um, I don't think Ralph's blameless. I think he's made some mistakes. I do like his honesty. Um, and I, I tend to agree a little bit like there's almost been a little bit of oversharing from him lately but I think he, he struggled to get a, together a team because I think there's just so many of them going and what worries me is I can see 10, 12 leave and we're never going to sign more than 4 or 5 are we? yeah yeah that worries me we're going to need some serious I, patience I, 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 I agree with that point. The amount of players that are leaving, it's difficult for somebody coming in the way he has to engage those 10 or 12 players that are probably going to leave and have disengaged. But that was the remit. That was the job of this new person to come in to try and make sure that wasn't the case and wasn't as difficult as it is. it's turned out to be. Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to live up to, or step up to it. But this next window is so crucial because you need to get the right people in. I don't think we're going to go out and, and be able to buy a superstar. I don't want I don't us think, to. I don't think it's the I don't think it's the right thing to do either. But I keep saying it. I sound like a broken record. You got to get the right people. The right culture has got to be set. It's got to be a reset of standards on a day to day basis. The reset of the culture at the club. It's a big job, man. This is a massive job for this guy. Can you buy that? Because I don't think I, I know what you were like. I think I know what you were like, but I don't think you walked in and had that on you. I think it was within you, but I don't think you walked in and was like, "This, it's got to be better." I think you had to go in there and absorb it a little bit first. Yeah, and you've got to. But you, first and foremost, you've got to want to. You've got to go and want to learn from people. You've got to want to go, go and want to. Action. It's twofold now. You need a manager to come in and set that culture and set the set the standards. You've got to bring in players that want to be led that way and want to lead, want to learn, want to drive the culture. Very different to my day when I came in. It was a lot easier for someone like me to walk in a dressing room like that. We've got born winners who are doing it consistently, people to learn off. Yeah, I think that's the issue is it's probably far easier to maintain standards than it is to get to standards. And I think we're, we're such a long way off. But, but Tuchel came in, mate. Bang. Changed it. Now, they're having a bad time right now, but they've had a good 8 to 10, 12 months with him. Oh, mate, I'll take the, the, I'll take the rough time if it means we're European champions, but we're, we're a long time off even qualifying for yeah. that, I think. Yeah, exactly. I think we should finish on that note. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Cheers, everybody, for tuning in. Have you got Make any sure questions? to enjoy your weekend. Any more questions? Do you want me to read some more questions out? If you a lot want, of people yeah, are just commenting. Let me go. Yeah, let's get about three or four questions in from everyone. Here we go. Question for Rio, it says, from Dugout Dan. Bruno didn't give Maguire the captain's armband when he came on. Does this tell you anything about a lack of respect for Maguire as a captain? Well, every time Jordan Henderson comes on that football pitch, whoever's captain, they give him the armband. When Fernandinho comes on the pitch for Man City, he gets the armband. There you go, then. That's that. There you go, Metro. Just there's your headline for you. Just cook some up on that. Um, Andy Harper says, how important is it to get the transfers done early doors? And do you think Ten Hag is having second thoughts? I don't think anything's changed since the day he signed till today, Ten Hag. Um, I think it'd be great if they can get the deals done early. But we know what football's like. It's difficult. 
It's, it's very it's complex. There's a lot of complications that go with signing players. But the earlier they can get the players in, if listen, the ideal scenario is to get the players in the first day of the transfer window. So the first day they start training again, then players are there to be coached straight away. Uh, one, one off me, actually, uh, before I get into the, some of the others. Would you want to try and give them an extended holiday to try and get something mentally out of them? Or would you just be like, get your asses to work the first minute possible? No, go holiday. I want you doing nothing for two weeks. Then start getting your mind. They want you working your body maybe the next week or so. If you've got another two weeks, if it's four weeks, if you've got another two weeks, start ticking over. Come in so you're not starting from zero. But get your mind focused after the next two weeks, after you've had the two weeks off, knowing you're coming. And I, I, I would presume that that manager will be having a couple of conversations with some, some of the integral members of that squad. I'm sure he'll be having a little bit of dialogue somewhere to get people ready to understand this is what I'm bringing. This is what's coming. This is what you're walking into now. Uh, all right. Lo loads of just random comments. A lot of... Um not very happy with the Glazer ones and, and various stuff like that. Um, and some that I just know you're not going to answer. So, uh, like, what's Ronaldo saying? That sort of stuff. So, um, I will leave it at that. But cheers for joining us. Um, you say you're heading home tonight or are you heading to Manchester? Cheers, guys. Yeah, going home and um, going to watch my little boy play football tomorrow. All right, well, there you go. Enjoy that. If you're watching some football tomorrow yourselves, enjoy that. But cheers for tuning in. As always, uh, make sure to subscribe to Five. We're back early doors on Monday, and it sounds like you've got a hell of a day on Monday. Um, but we'll be back yeah, with yeah, Five day, and hopefully day. better internet. See you on Monday, guys. You what? I'll see you on Monday. Yep, yeah, nice one. Right, cheers, everyone. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.